are we helping children grow? And I think that's really why we're all in this profession. And that is what INVEST is designed to evaluate, growth. And that's, that's really what teachers need to realize it's for, is helping, helping educators grow to help ch children grow in return. So. There are um, some paperwork that we need to do throughout the year. And a lot of that paperwork really falls into one category, and it's added reflections. And as teachers, I think more consistently, we need to be asking ourselves on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, are we doing the most highly effective lessons that we can? Are our students in charge of the learning versus the teacher? Uh, are we susceptible to change if what we're doing is not the most highly effective action? Um, the documentation that has created some issues, I do believe, though, um, is the, the binder or the required artifacts or any, any category you want to place that under. And there are still a lot of expectations being set for how many, how long, how much, but it was the, the paperwork in that category where anything above the required artifacts that kind of caused the confusion and I think the the scare and the nervousness about INVEST and the extra paperwork that it brought. Our administration was extremely um, productive and they had us right in the beginning use a binder, which was not required, but left us with a really good way to organize our documents. Um, made the expectations as clear to us as they could have been. Gave us options to, as instructional teams, brainstorm you know, very individually in our settings, how are we able to meet the required artifacts as well as go above and beyond to get the higher scoring. So it was just a lot of planning and preparation. Um, my principal, Mr. Stubblefield, he was in a lot of the groundwork as well as myself for all of this. So we had a little bit of the upper hand as far as knowing the expectations. And he really just helped us all be as upfront as he could and as clear. The INVEST evaluation system and the student growth piece bring a lot of specifics that are easy to get lost in. But one of the big, huge ideas that I have learned myself in my classroom is who's in charge of learning? And that has been a constant question I've learned to ask in my planning every day in the classroom as I'm listening, is there's this shift that needs to happen for a lot of us. The students need to be in charge. In an elementary setting, it's challenging. Will it happen every day? No. But that is the real difference between what we are calling a three and a four. The students need to be in charge as much as they can. There's a big step towards objectivity, where there was more subjectivity beforehand. The way that the assessments and the observations are run leave less room for interpretation and more room for very clearly stated what was seen and how that very directly ties into our components and our rating inside of the components. As a teacher, we have to stay in the forefront of best practices. Being um, an educator means rolling with the changes and I would really hate to see the fear of change prevent us all at taking invest as an opportunity to become more effective educators no matter what level or rating we fall under. The work that we're doing around um, evaluation and really it's work around teaching and learning is very important at this time because it is time for us to reconsider everything we're doing so that we can continue and improve the quality of education for our children in Aldine. Over the years we've had success in providing opportunities for our children to learn, but as the stakes get higher and as we increase the rigor in our standards, we've got to consider what we're doing and, in, and in consider how we can continue to improve or we will not be able to provide that same le level of success for our children and the same opportunities for them as they graduate from high school. So it's important for us to stop at this time to reflect upon what we're doing and to increase and improve the level of conversation about what's happening in the classroom. 
so that we can continually work on it and improve that on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think the work in the classroom has to be more thoughtful now. It has to be more purposeful, more intentional on the things we want children to be able to do. And if we don't stop and really make our conversations about teaching and learning the same kinds of conversations, then we're not going to be successful in the classroom. And even though we have incredible teachers in Aldine, we are all not doing the level of work that we want to do. And that's why it's important for us to work on invest and work on improving our evaluation system and improving our teaching at this time. The importance of the work we're doing, I think, is going to have an impact, obviously, and my main objective is to for Alding. But I think it's important that we share the work that we're doing with many people. Because we, even though we've experienced some success in the past, I, I, I have to mention that we've been a Broad Prize winner and a finalist several times. Uh, that's brought us a lot of acclaim. But this is a new frontier for us in the, in the types of things that we're, we hope to accomplish for our children. And I, I do have to say, we consider our teachers to be incredibly important, obviously, because they are on the front line. But our principals and our administrators are also crucial and we're very selective in what we do in choosing our principals so that they can truly be the best instructional leaders in our campus. And we feel like this work that we're doing with INVEST and, the, and working on our evaluation system in some ways is groundbreaking because we talk about the amount of work that we're going to be participating in, the level of, uh, of conversation. I use that phrase over and over again. That is crucial for our principals to have that knowledge, to have that support, to have that expertise. And to truly be certified in that so that when teachers, we are having conversations with teachers about the evidence of what we're seeing in their classrooms and what we can do to support them and help improve instruction for our children, then there's that level of trust and confidence that we want to have between our administrative staff and our teachers. So we truly feel like what we're doing here is in some ways groundbreaking. I think that there are other projects around the country that are in the, in the same vein, same track. Uh, I feel like we're sort of following in the footsteps of MET, but I do intend that we're going to take this a step beyond so that we can uh, truly make this appropriate for Aldine, but things that can be shared, and we hope to share our learnings with others around the state and obviously around the country. We feel like this work that we're doing with INVEST and, the, and working on our evaluation system in some ways is groundbreaking because we talk about the amount of work that we're going to be participating in, the level of, uh, of conversation, I use that phrase over and over again, that is crucial for our principals to have that knowledge, to have that support, to have that expertise and to truly be certified in that so that when teachers, we are having conversations with teachers about the evidence of what we're seeing in their classrooms and what we can do to support them and help improve instruction for our children, then there's that level of trust and confidence that we want to have between our administrative staff and our teachers. So we truly feel like what we're doing here is in some ways groundbreaking. I think that there are other projects around the country that are in the, in the same vein, same track. Uh, I feel like we're sort of following in the footsteps of MET, but I do intend that we're going to take this a step beyond so that we can uh, truly make this appropriate for Aldine, but things that can be shared and we hope to share our learnings with others around the state and obviously around the country. But one of the things that I'm very pleased about and what we've done with INVEST is we have truly gathered the resources and the experts to guide us in this journey. And we truly believe that even though we have a lot of expertise in our school district, having people like Charlotte Danielson and Lynn Sawyer and Ted Hirschberg and his, uh, the University of Pennsylvania and also having John Schachter, we have truly used them now with the vehicle of TeachScape to help us pull this all together. So this is not a fly-by-night uh, Aldine project that we've done in a matter of a few weeks. We truly are taking the time to grow this, develop this, and get lots of teacher input. And I'm really proud of the opportunity that our teachers have had to give us feedback and input and tell us, oh, this is overwhelming. Oh, or this needs to be improved. Because if we don't do this right by our teachers, we're never going to be able to support them in the way that we hope to, and we're never going to get the results that we hope to by embarking on this mission. 
Ultimately, INVEST is designed to improve teacher practice to increase uh, student learning, and so teachers are really central to the implementation of the policy. The district has made a real commitment to gathering teacher feedback, both during the design phase, so teachers served on the work groups to help create the policy itself, and then through the pilot implementation year, I've been out in schools talking with teachers um, through interviews, focus groups, and surveys to really gather teacher input on both the strengths of the pro process and also recommendations that they have for improvement. I was out on campuses over the air talking to teachers, and what they really like about this new framework is that it provides them with more ownership over the learning process. So the Danielson framework is very specific and clear and gives them a stronger understanding of what good practice looks like. And then through conversations and dialogue with their um, principals, they can really reflect on their practice and take it to the next level. At the beginning of the year, INVEST was new for teachers, and so they were understandably a little bit concerned and worried about how it would play out over the course of the school year. But as the district really committed to doing more training and consistent communication with teachers about the policy, teachers began to feel more comfortable with the tool and really saw it as a way to improve their own practice in the classroom. Well, I think that the Aldean's commitment to teacher involvement is really unique. And so to have teachers involved from the very beginning of the process in designing the policy through the pilot implementation year and now at the conference presenting some of their feedback on the first year of the initiative, um, I don't think all districts are committed to teacher involvement in the way that Aldine has been. I would recommend that teachers start compiling their artifacts at the beginning of the year so that when they're going through the process they don't have to scramble to find this, to find that in order to make their binder look sufficient to document and evident the things that they've done in their classroom. To prove, you know, the, the in-services that they've gone to, to have those certificates ready, to have those snapshots of their uh, classroom in their portfolio because I know on our campus we have some teachers that actually take pictures of the assignments and things that they do in their classroom and that's part of their portfolio. The paperwork can be cumbersome but if we start with the beginning of the year and compiling all throughout the year it won't be so, in, so, won't be so uh, tedious and a lot of work toward the end of it. My biggest concern about INVEST when it first started was disseminating the information. If we break it down into different bits and pieces as opposed to giving it to the teachers all at one time, that was very overwhelming because we kind of panicked in the aspect, well, we got to get this done by a certain date. We got to get this done by a certain date. And the modules were very informative. However, if the modules perhaps were broken down into like maybe little sections of PowerPoints throughout the year to where we can have them in the library and go visit them when we needed to, although that access was available to us throughout the year, but I think if it was told to us that we have this available to us throughout the year and to go back and review it, I think it would be a little bit more helpful. So just getting all that information at one time was really overwhelming, in addition to the other things that we get from the district. They've told us that it's going to impact our learning, but once I've gone through the process and looking at the Lucy video part of it, it's shown me things that I perhaps need to work on to make me a better teacher. So I heard the mouth part of it that we we're going to be a better teachers but going through the process and seeing how it's going to be implemented and it's going to make me reflect on my teaching that's what made this standing apart for me. Our campus was fortunate in that we had the student part of it so knowing that my students really valued me and as a teacher and helping them to grow was really an aha moment for me. I really enjoy that because in the business world, the business is always surveying their customers to make sure they're satisfied. So I found this a very good selling point for this uh, program because they asked the students, how effective was your teacher? No names or anything, but just how effective you know your teacher was for you. Customer satisfaction is always great. So I found that as a very good selling point for, th for this program. And then not only that, the reflective piece. It forced me, it made me, to want to become a better teacher, to want to ascribe to this, this position. So if I do, my students are going to be successful. And after all, that's the number one piece for student success. And the challenge now across the United States is, can we take the current teacher corps, which has been doing an adequate job uh, 
bringing students to levels that used to be okay for an industrial economy. The real challenge now is how do you create much more effective teaching? So what's happened across the United States, virtually every single state in the nation, is now engaged in designing a new teacher evaluation system, which is what INVEST is. But the real challenge when you have fair and authentic evaluation is what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Um, accountability is terribly important. Uh, you need to create incentives, uh, both positive and negative, uh, so that teachers will have a reason to want to do better beyond uh, simply their own desires. But you also need supports. You also need, if a teacher says, well, there's a reason for me to want to do better, how, I, and I want to do better, how can I become better? So the architecture of the INVEST system is both new rewards and new supports. So on top of the new teacher evaluation system, with the funding from the Arnold Foundation and from the Brown Foundation, what we're now setting out to do is to build a performance-based compensation system so that teachers can earn more money more quickly if they're successful with their students. Um, and in turn, if they're not successful, they're going to have to undertake steps of remediation, and they might lead to the dismissal of their job if their instruction is not adequate. But we're not simply saying, work harder. We're saying, here's how you can work harder. So all the new TeachScape technology, uh, the Danielson 16 hours of video, uh, Project Learn, uh, new professional learning communities, um, having teachers be able to work with each other uh, and actually see themselves, the videotaping that's now going to be available. Uh, every school in this district is going to have a Lucy camera, which will allow teachers with a lavalier mic to record in 360 degrees and look at those videos, both of themselves and I want to share with their colleagues. So teachers in Aldine will have the best possible opportunity to grow and improve the quality of their instruction. And our theory of learning, is, our theory of action, I should say, is very simple. If we can improve the quality of instruction, then we can improve what students really learn. Um, I want to just to talk a little bit about the larger context. In the 1990s, in the early 1990s, it was widely believed by people on the left and the right that low-income minority kids couldn't achieve at high levels. And then something remarkable happened in a handful of schools, some public schools and some of the elite charter schools. They showed that these kids could indeed achieve at high levels despite their obstacles. The problem is you can't scale that model because it rests fundamentally on high quality instruction. So the significance of what's going on in Aldine is we know this has happened in a handful of the elite charter schools where they've recruited some of the best teachers in the country. The challenge is can we take a district as large as Aldine with a range of teachers, you know, a good cross section of teachers, mainly in this kind of general effective level and make them highly effective? That's the challenge. And I think the architecture of INVEST and the platforms that we're building to support it has the potential to, if the teachers will take advantage of the system, I think we can raise the bar here in Aldine. Um, one other thing that I'm really excited about with INVEST is um, giving, you know, Aldine has so many remarkable teachers and giving those teachers an opportunity um, to truly showcase um, the hard work that they do uh, with our students so that um, that can be recognized um, at many levels at the campus and ultimately through our compensation. I think student achievement will be improved by using INVEST on our campus because it's purposeful planning, it's purposeful feedback, it allows teachers to reflect with their administrators on practices that they're using in their classrooms that are working. It also allows them to reflect on what's not working and make adjustments through the feedback sessions that INVEST allows us to have. With the implementation of INVEST on our campus, teachers were a little reluctant initially because it is the unknown and it was something new. But it's very important that administrators 
provide a consistent message to all their staff that allows them to see that this is a process that truly helps them build on their knowledge and skills of teaching to help improve student achievement. And the feedback and the reflection pieces allow teachers over time to see that this is just not another piece of paper or another type of form of I gotcha. It truly works on helping them improve what they do in the classroom through the reflection and through the feedback. That's key. Since INVEST is fairly new, teachers need to see models of what's expected uh, through binders uh, with the documentation of your domains one through four. It's important that they have a model of what you expect by way of classroom instruction, by way of planning and preparation. Each domain, there needs to be a model and an example for teachers to see because this is all new to them. They do not know what to expect. So it's important that administrators are very well versed as to what message to impart to teachers because if it seems confusing to the administrators, then that's the message that's going to be sent to the staff. If it seems seamless and less painful to administrators through the implementation processes that administrators set up, then that's how the message is going to come across to staff. It's very important that administrators put out the appropriate positive messages with INVEST because that's the, that's the type of feedback we want from our teachers. I know now um, I thought I was organized, but organization and timelines are key. So it's very important as principals that you, along with your assistant principals, have hard and fast timelines and are very organized with your teacher tracks, are very organized with your teachers that are on ISPs or PGPs. It's just very important that your calendar events line up with the timeline for invest by way of walkthroughs, evaluations, because the feedback, although it is timely, is very important. And if the feedback is not given in a timely manner and you don't give the time due to feedback, I think that's where invest falls apart because the nature of INVEST is to provide the teacher reflection feedback component, which PADAS really never allowed us to do in depth. INVEST allows us to do that. Actually, my, my, my concerns were nonsense concerns because I realized, quickly we realized that I, I was going to be the only one to watch the capture and I would have the, um, I guess, the authority to to, to um, authorize other people to watch the video. And um, it, it wasn't, once I realized, once we were given more information, and instead of just hearing hearsay, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Did you? The most revealing thing going through the program was that um, I can grow as a teacher, and I didn't have to be um, settled in the way that I had come in as a new teacher. And the, the tools um, were actually um, a tool that I could use, the tools, the framework were, uh, were a tool that I could use for, uh, to help me uh, grow as a teacher and learn uh, um, how I can become a better teacher. I, I think in the beginning, when, when my students first came to me, they were um, very uh, dependent on me. And, and wanted me to help them with everything. And they're fifth graders. And as, I, as they learned that I was still going to school and that I was using the, the reflective tool, the, the, the camera, the captures as a reflective tool, they also wanted to be part of it and they wanted to grow themselves and they wanted to see. In the beginning, I was using more Spanish and I was answering with one word and now at the end, I'm answering complete sentences and I'm using academic language. It's, it's not as scary as you think. Um, initially, you, you might be afraid of the, of the video, video capture, but as, if you look at it as, a, as an effective learning tool for yourself, it, it will help you be reflective so you can improve upon your practice. Okay. Invest is definitely going to help improve our student achievement because it's going to allow us to have very courageous conversations with teachers in which we have evidence and we can definitely pinpoint areas of strength in areas where they're doing extremely well and areas that might need some tweaking. Um, for a lot of our teachers, they come to work with the best intentions and they want to get better. And this, this instrument is going to allow us to 
be more specific in our feedback. It's going to be very important to let your teachers know exactly how your building expectations are aligning to the Danielson rubric because when you become more specific in the different procedures and the different instructional strategies and expectations of student collaboration, then the teachers are empowered to truly step outside their comfort zone and really try those new things that are gonna make them take their teaching to the next level. Well, to be really honest with you, the district did a really good job having small attainable goals. And I feel that that's the key. You have to take it one step at a time and you have to maintain your teachers informed. They need to know exactly what time of the year it is. You know, they need to get ready for the 15 minute walkthrough or it's time to start working on their observations. And then, the district really gave us that framework to space out all of the different components of, of our invest system. I've noticed that students have definitely noticed a change in how we come and in, in, in observe them in classrooms because they're very comfortable letting us know what they're learning. A lot of us as we're doing our walkthroughs, we not only observe the teacher, but we ask the students, well, tell me, how did you learn that? Or what's important about learning binomials or fractions? And the teacher and the students are becoming just very comfortable expressing themselves, using that academic language to let us know exactly why they're learning and how they're learning it. And, and that conversation just becomes more it becomes a richer conversation and it's just amazing to see their potential and how much they really are understanding and taking a, a more of an active role in in their learning that is definitely a paradigm shift they have to they have to embrace the the program in, in at least in the one year experience that i have i have seen a huge difference in how the students are talking about their own learning and how the teachers are having more conversations with us about how they can improve their teaching. And in the past, we didn't see a lot of that. And INVEST has really brought that courageous conversation, the, the open dialogue in which teachers really are looking at their teaching as a craft and they're really wanting to get better at their craft.